Hello folks, uh, welcome back under Southern Skies. So I've just got a really quick video here. I encountered a problem um, that I don't usually encounter. Um, not 100% sure why, but anyway, it's about hot pixels. Um, and I found a solution that on this occasion went really well, so I thought I'd share it. Um, what we're looking at here is the is GIMP. Um, it's what I use instead of Photoshop. Um, it's free and it enables basically layered editing. Um, and I use it usually just to finish off um, astrophoto processing. So what I've got here is an image that I um, collected on Friday night of M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. And I'm just having a look right now just because I need to explain, I need to make some excuses for this image. Um, it rose about 24 degrees above the horizon, but I imaged it on the way up. Um, so what you'll notice when I zoom in to show you the hot pixels is that it's a little bit um, on the ordinary side in terms of look at the chromatic aberration here we have a blue edge and a red edge all on um, pretty well all the stars there's a lot of trailing i've given this a lot of um, deconvolution and some other treatment in pix insight but i'm actually working on a better version of it right now um, i might do another video on um, the new feature in in wvpp in pix insight which enables you to stack and produce um, monochrome um, RG and B images, which when you then combine them, voila, the chromatic aberration is gone. But anyway, I didn't do that with this one. When I It was only when I got it into GIMP, really, that I saw all these hot pixels. And um, pretty sure they're not white dwarf stars. I'm pretty sure they're hot pixels that through the saturation and stretching processes I have really brought out and um, I didn't really want them there. So when I brought the image into GIMP, as I do um, to finish it off, I saw them. I thought, I wonder if I can use a filter to get rid of them. So here we go. Let's go to filters. There is this really handy set of filters called GMIC. QT. Now, I'm I think that a couple of years ago I had to install this as a plugin. Not 100% sure. So, if you've got GIMP and you haven't can't find GMIC here in filters, you probably need to do a bit of a Google for GMIC um, plugin or GMIC install download. Um, and there are some, there will be some YouTube tutorials, I'm sure, that explain how to do that. But anyway, here's how it looks. It, it brings up sort of a browser of filters. Um, one that I use almost every time after discovering it recently is Freaky Details. And you can see there, um, it's sort of a localized contrast filter. I usually have to turn it down because by the time I've got... Um, I've finished processing in Pix Insight. I've already brought out a fair bit of detail, but this just finishes it off nicely. So anyway, freaky details, fantastic. Um, I pretty well use it now instead of sharpening. I use it on lunar images. It's fantastic on lunar images. Um, um, but I also use it in galaxy and nebula photos. Um, so that's in GMIC. The other one I've been using for years is Ian's Noise Reduction. Um, and you probably just saw that um, blur the image a bit there. And what you can do with Ian's Noise Reduction is control how much noise reduction is happening in the shadows or in the light areas. Um, you can desaturate the noise, so you might not want to um, increase the blurring at all, but you might just want to desaturate the noise, which um, uh, particularly um, with the when I've stretched and saturated an image, um, I do find I can get a purplish hue from the, bled and the red and blue noise. 
So sometimes desaturating the noise in noise reduction here can actually um, get rid of that purple, which um, I don't think is is necessarily a true representation of the sky. But anyway, so you can control how much softening is happening um, and you can also ask it to recover some detail for you. So that's Ian's noise reduction, that's, that's also tops. But that's not what we're here for right now. We're here to get rid of these hot pixels. Um, so if we just scroll down here, we should be able to find remove hot pixels. Now, just by turning on um, the filter, you can see it's getting rid of a lot of them, but the blue and red ones are still remaining. So all we need to do is increase the mask size and they're gone. Now you can use this preview window to scroll around and make sure that no other details that you're wanting to keep, like sometimes small stars can be picked up in this Remove Hot Pixels um, filter, or in, I think in any Remove Hot Pixels filter. And you don't necessarily want to do that unless you're using it to do a star reduction. But um, in this case, I'm not. I just want the hot pixels gone. And you can see it's doing a fairly good job of getting rid of them. So all you then need to do is click on Apply. Um, you'll see here you can choose to um, remove them from the current layer that you've got active, or you can actually in here it's finished already. In here you can say we'll make a new layer, um, make a new active layer, etc., etc. But anyway, that's done. I'm going to say OK, and you'll see if I just go through the history here and go back. There's the hot pixels. Now they're gone. Hot pixels. Hot pixels gone. And just interestingly, I'm looking at this and I'm noticing there are some changes to some of the stars. Oh, can't scroll like that. I can scroll like this. There are some changes to the stars that are happening. Perhaps I made that radius too large. However, um, I don't think it's having a particularly bad impact. There's the hot pixels in. Now they're gone. Now you notice that it getting rid of those, there are so many of those hot pixels that it actually changes the way the background looks. It actually removing them makes the background look darker, um, which is good in my opinion. So yeah, this was a short integration. I, I think maybe there were 26 subs um, at 1,000 millimeters or thereabouts. Um, uh, 20 something degrees over the horizon. So there was plenty of atmosphere in the way, which is why there's chromatic aberration. Guiding was atrocious, but I was happy because uh, um, I was out in a dark sky. I had the opportunity to actually see Triangulum um, which I can't do at home, and um, the home is minus 35 degrees declination south, um, and so I've got to be up somewhere relatively high um, and relatively dark just to be able to even have a chance to image triangulum. So yeah, even the better image I'm working on now may not be as great as um, images from the northern hemisphere, but um, but I'll still be happy with it, and I'll be happier with it to have the hot pixels gone. So if you've got GIMP and you've got hot pixels, uh, maybe give this filter a try, and I hope that that's been really helpful to you. If it has, um, do me a favor, like and subscribe to help the channel grow, and uh, I'll see you next time under Southern Skies.